In this video, we're looking at how we can create a list of all the possible combinations from two tables. So if we have table one and table two, how do we create this? This video contains lots of great array techniques. So if you're ready, let's get started. Here on the left, we have the two tables that we want to combine. The first table is called color and the second table is called size. Now both of these tables contain multiple columns and the solution that we're going to build will work with any number of columns. We're gonna start in cell E5 by typing equals let opening bracket and then I press Alt and Enter to create a new line. The let function enables us to create a name and then allocate a calculation to that name. We can then reuse that name later on in the formula. The first name I'm going to create is array one. This is going to refer to the first range that we want to combine. Our first table is called color, so I will select that table. I'll enter a comma, Alt Enter to create another new line, and then our second name is Array2. And for this, we want to allocate our size table. So we now have our two arrays. We are going to be referring to the row numbers in both tables multiple times. So let's allocate these two names as well. We'll call the first one rows1, and for this, we're going to use the rows function based on Array1. So this will calculate how many rows we have in that array. Let's do the same for array two. So rows two will be based on the rows of array two. Next, we want to create a sequence of numbers that represents the number of rows that we will have in our output. I'm going to create the name index. And for this, we're going to use the sequence function. For the rows argument, we want the rows from array one multiplied by the rows from array two. Then we come to the columns argument and we want a single column. Now, because of the functions that we will be using in a few moments time, we want to start counting from zero. So we will use zero as the start. I'll then close the sequence function, enter a comma and Alt Enter to create a new line. For the let function, the last argument that we provide is the result returned. So let's return our index so we can see what that currently looks like. We have four rows in our first table and three rows in our second table. So four times three is 12, and we want to start counting at zero. Therefore, we have the numbers from zero to 11. Let's now edit our formula, and we want to create a repeating pattern that represents the number of rows in array one. So we want a pattern of one, two, three, four, followed by one, two, three, four, and so on. I'll press delete to remove the bracket, and we're going to call this step index one. Now for this, we're going to use the mod function. Mod returns the remainder after a number is divided by a divisor. For the number argument, we want to use the result of our previous index calculation. Then we want to divide that by our rows one calculation. I'll close that bracket and then let's output index one so we can see the result. And there you can see we have the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3 repeated, but we want this to start from one. So let's edit our formula and go back to our index one and we're going to plus one. So that means that our result is now one, two, three, four repeated. The next pattern we need is the number one repeated four times and then the number two repeated four times and then the number three repeated four times. So let's edit our formula we're going to create a new name called index two. And this is going to be based on the quotient function that returns the integer portion of a division. Now, before we go any further, I do have to say thank you to William Arthur, who in the comments to a previous video told me about this quotient function. It's not a function I've ever used before, but it's easier than the method that I was going to use. So I thought, why not include it in this video? So thanks to William Arthur. The arguments for the quotient function are numerator and denominator. We can use the same numbers as we used for our mod function. So index, comma, rows one, and then just as before, we need to plus one. 
I'll enter a comma and create a new line. And now let's output index two. And you can see we now get the repeating pattern of four ones, four twos and four threes. We now have all the information that we need to combine these two tables together. Before we go any further, I just want to remind you that inside our Excel Academy, we have a course called Dynamic Formulas Unleashed that teaches you everything you need to know about working with dynamic arrays inside Excel so that you can build up these kind of solutions yourself. Just head on over to excelthegrid.com and check it out. Now let's head back to look at our formula. So let's edit our formula and the last name we will create will be result. Now let's look at each of these individually. Let's use choose rows on our array, which is array one. And then for the row num one argument, we're going to use index one. Let's now just output this result. And you can see that we now get black, blue, red, and orange, and that is repeated multiple times. Now, if we change our choose rows to be array two and index two, when that calculates, we now get small four times, medium four times, and large four times. All we have to do is use the H stack function. We want to use that on the choose rows of array one and index one. We can then close our bracket at the end of H stack. And when that calculates, we now have the combination of every color and every size. Now, what happens if we get a new size? Let's suggest we get extra large and it is 80 centimeters. You can see that our data updates automatically. And that's it, that's all we need. We just need repeating number patterns and then the choose rows function so we can pull out the relevant rows from our original arrays. Now, if you like this video, then why not subscribe and get notifications so you don't miss any of our future videos. Once you've done that, why not check out this video next? It contains lots more awesome array techniques. So thanks for watching. And I'll catch you next time.